Do you want to talk about CJ Beathard at all? I mean, yeah, let's give, I, him, let's give I, him some props. That was awesome for CJ Beathard. That was really awesome. He's just a guy that, you know, I think most people have written off. Most people are just like, why is Kyle Shanahan kept this guy on the team for so long? But, you know, that was really cool. He played well. He did his job. He didn't turn the ball over. And, you know, he's gone through so much in the last three, three years, two years and three years. And I think people have emphasized it a lot. It's not just the family stuff. I thought what happened to him as a rookie was really hard where he had yeah. to come in and play games because Brian Hoyer was shot after four games, five games. I think Brian Hoyer was real, was looking at his life and it was just flashing before his eyes. Like, wow. He was I'm taking, he like taking Nick Mullins treatment. He was taking right. like 10, 11 hits a game and most guys can't. It do was it. worse, he right? Because he didn't even have a Trent Williams. They had a Philly yeah. game where they played the Super Bowl Philly team with Eric Magnuson and Zane Beatles. And he got beaten. At tackle, a right? Yeah, it was right. Bad. And every was game, bad. they didn't even – there was a while that they didn't even have, like, a real backup. And so every game would feel like C.J. Beathard is just getting himself up. And he just looked like a guy that was laboring through. And I don't believe he could have had full grasp at the off, of the offense at that point. I mean, he's a rookie that they drafted in the third round. And they were probably not prepping him to start a game last in 2017. So what he went through that. It was a bad team. Yeah, it was a bad team. Yeah, it was horrible. And he went through that. And he went through all of that. And then what he had to go through in 2019 with his family stuff, for him to bounce back, get a win. And now. Also the humiliation along. It wasn't just that he failed. He was humiliated. And I. Yeah. Probably helped with that a little bit in retrospect. Just a little bit. But that's in the past. And we don't want to. We're looking forward. So right. he did a great job dealing with all of that. And now all of a sudden he he comes in and he's like the veteran. I was like, oh, yeah, so and you know, older than these guys. Right. And, you know, the way he played and all of that, it really doesn't like mean that much in the long term. He's still CJ Beathard. But, you know, for him to go out on top, hopefully he plays good against Seattle, too, because I think he's going to get a job somewhere else or maybe even a backup job back here now that Nick Mullins could be gone. You but don't that's think a, that's a, but I, I don't, but we'll see. Hey, I hope he does. I'm not rooting against yeah. him. I'm not rooting against yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. I just think because he knows the Kyle Shanahan system, I think that he has a good chance of getting another chance somewhere. But because of that, I, I just look at him and I say, well, congratulations. That's really yeah. awesome. And I'm really happy for him. Yeah. Because, I mean, for a guy who may not have the longest NFL career, uh, there's not really much he can point to to his kids or his grandkids and be like, well, you know, this one day I had it. He beat the Giants that one day, and that would have been it. He had that nice throw to Goodwin. It was a beautiful throw. But this win, I mean, there weren't any, like, jaw-dropping throws, but it was just a very mature win. He did it. He beat a team that was going to have a, a a winning record, was playing for the playoffs. He can be proud of this. He beat Kyler Murray. He beat Kyler freaking Murray. He should be the way he should be proud of this the way that uh, Nick Mullins should be proud of beating Russell Wilson in 2018 and mm-hmm. the Rams this year. It's a big deal. It's a division opponent. Good for you, too. They can't take that away from you ever, ever. Great. So, unless you got anything else you want to say, we can move on to uh, Nick Mullins. They haven't announced what the deal is. Kyle's going to talk in a couple hours. He may explain, but I think I don't know. He's he said one way or another, it's going to be a long rehab. What do you, what do you think? What are your thoughts on on Nick? I feel bad for him. Elbow injuries are tough, and if you're a quarterback that didn't have a very strong arm to begin with, I can't imagine what your arm's going to be after an elbow injury. I hope it's not Tommy John, just because you look at Ben Roethlisberger, he was throwing rocket launchers before Tommy John. And now after Tommy John, his arm is not the same. The ball floats a bit more. I mean, he's still Ben Roethlisberger to an extent, and he played better against Indianapolis, but he's not the same player he was. And he looks like a guy that his career is maybe done, if not this year, the year after that. And so I feel bad for Nick Mullins that way, because you can see, like, for all the criticism he's taken this season and stuff, He's a guy that you can see football means a lot to. And it's tough to watch someone who cares so much about something be likely unable to do that because of circumstance and something like injury. It's tough. And I I feel bad for him. That's all. I just really feel bad for him. I mean, the fact that he's in the position he's in, that he made it that far, is a testament to him. To his will. I mean, he basically willed it. It's not like he had all these gifts. He just really meant a lot to him. He studied. He, he got in the right position, and he he got opportunities and did well. And now it's like, I don't know, it's like Cinderella. You know, he he was he was uh, in the basement. 
he was doing nothing. His life stunk. And then all of a sudden he's at the ball and it almost worked out. And then right before midnight, oh, your elbow fell off. Sorry. Good luck. I hope you enjoyed your uh, little fairy tale. And now it's over. Ooh, it stinks. But I hope his elbow is better. All I know is in baseball, a lot of these pitchers come back with even more arm strength. But it doesn't work that way in football, huh? I don't know. I, I don't know much about it. I'm not a big baseball guy. And the biggest example would be for me right now, Ben Roethlisberger. Mm -hmm. And if you're a guy like Nick Mullins, like, yeah, well, good luck, Nick. The other thing for him is who's going to want him. If the 49ers don't re-sign him, he's kind of jobless. So we'll, well see. Well, I think he'll be a coach as soon as his career is over. Soon. You think he'll go into coaching? Oh, yeah. I think he's the kind of guy who can't stay away from football. I think it means that much to him. And they've already said that he's going to be a coach. I've asked Kyle Sanahan that question in the press conference. He said, oh, yeah. But I don't think his career is necessarily over. I'm not going to write him off like that. He's going to take a while. I don't know if he's going to play next year. I actually don't, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Joe Burrow going to have the long road back. We'll see who makes it back first. You know who my money's on. All right, let's keep Joey going. Joey B's walking, so he's already got a head start. <laughs> I think Mullins can walk. <laughs>